together again on the radio. And uh, here's something that we talked about a long time ago. At least I brought it up in conversation. And uh, now, it's a column from the Baltimore Sun newspaper by somebody named Abigail Tucker. It's called the new DWI. Now, you know what the new DWI is, right? We said this a long time ago. It's an old joke from the Tom Lyka show. Uh, yes, it's dialing while intoxicated. I've accused uh, many callers of dialing while intoxicated. Now, here is the story from the Baltimore Sun, Abigail Tucker. Ryan Little was feeling tipsy one recent night. He decided to call this girl Diane he knew from college. Unfortunately, his fingers were also a bit woozy as they walked across his cell phone keys. When his call went through, he started talking flirtatiously and without stopping for four minutes. Unfortunately, it wasn't Diane on the other end. I hit my dad's number instead, the Baltimore resident said. Increasingly common with the proliferation of cell phones and their free midnight minutes, drunken dialing has become a national pastime. Some call these calls, particularly those made to exes, pathetic. But others laud them as an outlet for spontaneous expression that might be healthier than many other drunken activities. According to the Word Spy, a website that tracks new vocabulary, the term drunk dial is both a verb and a noun, as in, I got his drunk dial, but only applies to communications that are embarrassing or absurd. One drunk dials to emote, excoriate, declare, confide, or proposition, often at a grossly inappropriate hour. Calling a cab doesn't count. Calling an old friend in New Jersey at 3 a.m. to get directions to a good Baltimore pancake house definitely does, admitted Peter Lee of Baltimore. Drunk dialing has quickly entered the lexicon because, quote, it's familiar to everyone. So Jim Taylor, co-writer of Sideways, the critically acclaimed film that includes an exquisite sequence in which the lead character, having downed several bottles of wine, calls his ex-wife from a restaurant payphone. Uh, that, by the way, was a very funny scene in the movie. That's why it's humorous. Everyone has done it, Taylor said. Without embarrassment, there's no comedy. He said life would be less rich. If drunk dialing was eliminated by scheming cell phone companies, Taylor said, it would be a loss to the world. By the way, in case you don't remember a story we read on the air here, there are actually cell phone companies now that are allowing you to block certain numbers so you couldn't accidentally dial them when you're drunk. Why ruin all the fun? The story goes on. Terrible in memory. Inexplicably satisfying in the moment. Drunk dialing usually happens at the end of the night when feelings of boredom or abandonment set in, said Jen Vitelli, a server in a Felis Point bar. It's like, I'm wasted. What now? She said. Most people have pulled a drunken phone stun at one time or another, according to a recent study by Virgin Mobile, which... And this is what I was telling you. Not, oh, not so coincidentally offers, at least in Australia, a service that allows users to block the numbers of certain people during prime imbibing hours. The feature, whose logo is a cell phone with a straw for an antenna, probably will be offered in the United States as early as next year. The company found that 95% of people have drunk dialed. 30% have called ex-lovers. 19% have called current partners. And they finally, the... Uh, Response, anyone and everyone else, 36%. Nothing rams home a hangover like the shadow, shadowy recollection of a hang-up call. The company reports that after a night of drinking, more than half of drunk dialers assess the damage on their call logs before doing anything else, including taking aspirin. Ever done that? Ever looked back at the list of people you called last night and the various times you called them? 12.19 a.m., 12.20 a.m., 12.20 a.m., 12.21 a.m., 12.21 a.m., 12.21 a.m., 12.22 a.m. Done that? <laughs> he, 
Yeah. Says here, alcohol relaxes the inhibitions that normally control behavior. Too much allows the id Freud's dark engine of sex and aggression to ride roughshod over more refined parts of the personality, according to Thomas Allen, a Towson, Maryland psychoanalyst. Lusts and rages spill out of the subconscious and into the receiver. In physiological terms, the force behind drunk dialing is an alcohol-induced cascade of brain chemicals, such as dopamine, associated with pleasure and heightened sociability. This release, combined with the gradual powering down of the central nervous system, is a toxic cocktail, said Guo Wa Li, a professor at Johns Hopkins Medical School who specializes in alcohol-related trauma. Most of the injuries Lee sees are far worse than the damage inflicted by drunk dialing. Although, he said, I guess it depends on what you say. No known scientific profile defines the habitual dialer. But Chris Bain, a software salesman from Orlando, Florida, offered up an amateur observer's theory, the proof for which is in, well, the proofs. Bain maintains that beer, whiskey, and vodka hounds are more compulsive about the behavior. Your gin drinkers, your scotch drinkers, they have a little more class, he said. They won't be as quick to drunk dial or admit they did. Then you have the tequila people, he said after a considered pause. They're just insane. An incurable dialer who has an unsettling tendency to ring his boss, Bain is the founder of SlackerTown.com, a two-month-old website devoted to helping afflicted phone owners. Cell phone companies will never stop the practice of drunk dialing, Bain believes. The impulse is too primal. That's why he set up an emergency number and answering machine where dialers can vent day or night. When you've got something stupid to say, you call us, he said. The anonymous audio tracks from the calls, which are slurred and often quite explicit, get posted on the website for all to hear. Several dozen are currently listed, including these choice sound bites. Hey, Amanda, I can't believe you actually married him. Your children are going to look like hell. Or, I love you. I just wish I knew you a little better. Or, here's another call somebody made. I should be eating hash browns right now. Instead, I'm staring at a blank wall. The website also offers an address for inebriated emailers, which has received fewer submissions, Bain believes, largely because slurring words in text is a lot harder. Thus far, the page does not accommodate the needs of toasted text messengers and bombed black barriers whose ranks are also swelling. <laughs> the story is great. <laughs> Admittedly, the website has done little to reform Bain's habit. The point is more to laugh at others' calls, he said. We offer something for the drunk and the sober, he said. Drunk dialing does make for first-rate entertainment. Hardly a television season passes without characters humiliating themselves on the phone. Remember the crazy Dawson's Creek episode when Joey drunk dialed Dawson? Or when Rachel from Friends obliterated, called Ross from a fancy restaurant, then tossed the cell in an ice bucket? The sweetest, though, was the second season of Sex in the City when a cranky called Mr. Big in Paris where it was 5 a.m. to scold him about love, cocktails, and basic human decency. I am a woman, she informed him, unbidden, a woman. This didn't do much for Carrie's relationship with a woman and Cassie Regan of Baltimore is indebted to drug dialing. Last New Year's Eve, she met a man whom she feared might never call. And about midnight a week later, her phone rang. It was the man, his confidence bolstered by six 10-ounce ounce glasses of beer. A year later, they're still together. How could she fall for a drunk dialer? Well, she said, I was drunk myself. Drunk dialing. Yes, we've all done it. Yes, we have. I mean, where would booty calls be without drunk dialing? Seriously, where would they be? Every booty call just about is drunk dialing. And, um, of course, uh, you heard some of the examples of drunk dialing here. Uh, you've either received these calls or made them. By the way, here's uh, another... By the way, I'm, I'm not claiming to be immune. I've done it myself. You know how, you know, if you don't look at the past calls on your phone, you don't look at your call log? Yeah, the messages you get back the next day from people. Hello, Tom, I got your call last night. What time was that that you called me? You forget those calls? Voicemails from people you don't remember calling? You'd never admit it. <laughs> All right. You've made them or you've received them. Tell us about drunk dialing.
Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I am really excited to talk to you. You turned me on so much. Is that so? Yes. The Tom Likas Show. one 800 800 time dwi Dialing while intoxicated. It's John on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Yep. Yeah. How you doing, Tom? I'm okay. You sound terrible. Why, thank you. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, I got a story for you about drunken, drunken dialing. and uh, Yes. It's going to linger on for the rest of my life because of it. All right. I actually had a girlfriend for about three years just after high school, which kind of kept me away from moving out to go to school and whatnot. We wanted to stay together, you know, just, oh, we're going to be together for the long haul. Let's figure out our story, where we're going to where we're going to stay and all that. Finally decided I needed to get away. I needed to break up, explore other things. So I moved away to San Diego to go to college out there. Was out there for about a month. Uh, lived in an apartment complex. They had these big parties every weekend. So we had a huge, huge part of this night. Got absolutely wasted. About 10 o'clock. Now, mind you, before I left, my girlfriend was devastated because I had broken up with her. She didn't want that. She thought it was going to go on forever. About 10 o'clock, I'm back in the apartment by myself, figuring, you know, nothing's going well tonight as far as me and any new chicks. I'll call my old girl up. I feel bad. She'd probably love to hear from me. Wasted. Call her up. She comes down about, an, gets down there about an hour later, uh, you know, stays the night. We're, we're, we're rekindling old flames for the evening. Julie goes home. Uh, about a m- few weeks later, she calls me up. She's pregnant. <sighs> Long oh. story short, we're together now. Now, mind you, the, I mean, I, I love my wife. She's, well, she's my wife now. I love my kids. She's two years old, so out of the deal. I'm okay with it, but, you know, I still got that in the back of my mind as what could have been had I not been so stupid. That wasn't that. the plan. Well... Was what was that? It? it wasn't the plan. No, it was not the plan. But uh, th- I think it's just when you're talking about drug di- dialing, there's an extreme case of the, what can happen as a, as a result of drug dialing. I mean, you can change your entire life as a result of something stupid like that. No, no doubt about it. Thanks for that story. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Sam on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Dad. Son. Please forgive me. Yes. I offend like left and right. This is how it started, Tommy. I got with a chick from work. Not only that, she's a single mom. Not only that, Tommy, not only that, her ex-boyfriend works in the same joint we do. Uh Not only that, she left her ex-husband. That she works with you. No, that she works with you. Yeah. Okay. No, I started working there. I didn't know. I got with her. Anywho... Long story short, I'm 21, she's 30, we still work together. Matter of fact, we bartend together, and her ex-boyfriend too, so we're in this like two-by-two two area most of the time, mm-hmm. all three of us. Uh-huh. We just broke up. I moved in with her, Tom. I had to move out of my apartment. She said, why don't you come live with me? I said, I'll be smart, save a couple of bucks. I know Dad would hate me. I know my dad, Tommy, would call me up and tell me, don't do it, but mm-hmm. I did it. That's right. So now she kicked me out. I got drunk and crazy on her one night. Hey, she kicked you out because you got drunk and crazy? Yeah, or I, you moved no, out? I got you, crazy. You moved out? What? Oh, okay. All right. You got, got drunk got and crazy, crazy and so she threw you. Her and her ex-boyfriend's relationship, I just started throwing stuff around her house. I gave her so many ultimatums time. In the first like couple months, she still oh. kicked me. So recently, she just like a month ago, she told me she can't handle it. Get the hell out. I leave. I'm pretty hurt. I know I shouldn't be, but I'm hurt, whatever. So ever since then, Tom, every night, I'm an alcoholic, man, but every night I get drunk. Not only do I call her in the middle of the night, but if she don't answer, I have the key to her house. I make sure she hears me. I go in there and knock on her freaking door, be like, hey, open up your door, your room door. Open it up. I want to talk to you. It's been like that for a month. Dad, I need somebody to slap me silly. Do it. <laughs> Why are you doing this? Because uh, I'm stupid. I guess. Well, you, I like, agree. You're stupid. I'm, I'm in love, but I shouldn't be at 21 with a 30-year-old. Shouldn't be in love at 21 with anybody. A. I, with we, me, I love me, though. <laughs> B, you shouldn't be with a single mother. No. Because ultimately, you will knock her up. 
And you know what else, Tom? You're going to really hate me for this. This is my fourth single mom in the row. There we go. Uh, another reason you don't want to be with a single mom and you don't want to be with her, she's working at your office. Yes. Three strikes, you're out, say. God, I am so out, Tom. You don't like before I got this job. I tried to call you because I was working somewhere else and I was quitting. And the number four, work. she she can't decide between you and the other guy. No, no, not so, all. Are, are I, those I four good reasons to go away? I'm trying to find another job, but well, forget about finding another job. Man up. Just just be like be a man. Go in there and just uh. go in there and do your goddamn job. That's right. And uh, if you live well and you've got other girlfriends, she'll have to see that. I see. She's, I tried to set her up for booty calls today, matter of fact. Stop for like, setting uh, up like single that. mothers for booty calls. No. Who's the yeah. father of that, that, that bastard, Jolliver? Uh, two of them, her ex-husband. <laughs> two of them? Yeah. yeah. They're, they're grown kids, though, 12 and like 10, something like that. Uh -huh. So she's been a slut for a long time. Uh, indeed. I, uh, that's, that's, my, uh, that's my theory. Yeah. Right. But that, if she's a slut, why would you even be in love with somebody like that? Just have sex with people who are sluts. Why, why would you want to marry a slut? Or be uh, involved with a slut? Or be uh, in love with a slut? That's the talking I need to, man. I'm telling you. I am an idiot. You have to stop doing this. I, I will. I will, Tommy. I will. You know, you, you deserve to be, first of all, with a variety of women. You're 21. 21. That's right. Why are you are you that hard up for Poon? No, not at all. Man, a piece like, of over-the-hill ass? Her, Tom, when I first met her, Tom, she used to come to my apartment. I used to kick her out. I used she to is 30. Like, she is past her prime. I used to tell her, you, a 30-year-old single mom, get the hell off my Right. Bed. And then she won me over by cleaning my my apartment, taking well, care of me well, when I got sick. Yeah, my well. brother-in-law flew in from out of town. Right, right. She cleaned up his room, uh -huh. took care of both of us. Hire a friggin' housekeeper. Yeah, well, she was. What are you doing? Uh, I'm being stupid, Dad. I don't know. No, stop being stupid. Forgive me. She's over the hill. She works with you. She likes the other guy at least as much as you, if not more. All right? Yeah, true. And she's a single mother of two kids. And by the way, how much money do you spend on those kids? Uh, none. No, no. Don't worry, you will. She spent money on me, Dad. She, yeah. she makes more money than me. She's been in that place for seven years. I've just been there since Come July. On. How much more could she make? You're both bartenders. Oh, well, she gets paid more an hour besides the... How family. much? Uh, like the double what I make. I what make does she make? She makes like 12 She makes, ooh, $12 yeah. an hour. Ooh. Yeah, I know. That's By the way, Sam, if you don't mind my asking, what college are you attending? Uh, I am anti-school, my good friend. <laughs> oh, well, that's obvious. Yes, you're anti-intellect, anti-success, anti-making any money, so you're the $7 an hour school, hoping to make it up to 8 Hopefully. I'm, 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 I'm still trying to live my life, get drunk every night, can't focus on school right now. Yeah, well, guess what? Yeah, if you keep doing this, Sam, this is as good as it's going to get. Damn it. <laughs> It's good talking to you, Tom. Yeah, I, always I know. Want to talk to you so you can Pearls talk. before swine. Me what? I will always want to talk to you so you can knock sense into me, man. Well, I, where is your father in all this? Uh, uh, I live on my own. My parents are in, uh, over in the Middle East. I'm Middle Eastern. They moved back uh, three years ago. Your father would kick years. your ass. My father would, yes. Yeah. So you yeah. need somebody to kick your ass. Well, the only father I have is on 97.1. Yeah. i got to listen to him every day. True words are never spoken, Sam. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's George on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, George. How are you, Tom? Do you care? I am a first-time caller, long-time listener. Thank you. Hey, Tom, I have a great story for you. Yes. Uh, I go out clubbing with my boys. We're all drinking and stuff. It's 2.30. Right. We get out of the club. Mm -hmm. So I start calling this girl, my booty call, and I'm all telling her, you know, I want to see you. And she said, well, come over. You know, call me when you're outside, and I'll come out and get you. She lives on a uh, uh, apartment building. So I go out there, and um, I'm outside her house, but I'm all drunk, right? So I start calling her, and she's not picking up. So I leave you in your messages. I'm telling her, look, I'm outside your house. You know, come on, come and get me, come and get me, whatever. And uh, after about 45 minutes, she never calls me back or anything. So, you know, whatever. So I go home. The next day, I get a call from my girlfriend telling me that I was leaving her all these messages 
all these dirty messages on her cell phone. And uh, I got, well, I got kind of busted because I was calling another girl instead of this other girl because I was all drunk. Uh, so you were using the other girl's name when you were calling? No, I didn't. I didn't leave. I didn't say any name. I well, was, how did your girlfriend know she was that you were calling somebody else? Well, she didn't know. That's the thing. Like, you, you're going to love this, Tom. She actually started apologizing, saying, I'm so sorry I didn't come out. You if know, I were awake, I would have done anything for you. <laughs> exactly. She said, I'm so sorry. You came all the way out here for me. And, uh, you know, I didn't come out. I, I didn't hear the phone. I'm sorry I didn't pick up. And that's my story, Tom. Good. And you know what I would have done? I would have said, you know what? I think I need a little time alone to think about this. <laughs> then go nail there the other go. chick. There you go. I love you, Tom. Thank you, George. Appreciate the call. Dave on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. Time, long time. Thank you. I got a story that's going to blow your mind. I yeah. was married to a French-Canadian girl for yeah. about six years. Uh-huh. And uh, early in 94, we uh, decided that it was time to part ways. Um, so probably we're in the middle of a divorce. Things are going, you know, mediocre. I guess in a divorce, it's always mediocre. Uh, we're splitting everything up. And I go out with my buddies. We go dark, uh, playing darts. And... Uh, I get drunk, I go home, I give her a call. She gets all aggravated. She's talking to me on the phone like uh, like we were still married, pushing buttons, giving me the old run around, blah, blah, blah. So I, I figured, uh, I started to get aggravated. She kept pushing buttons. Lo and behold, she had got her cell phone, uh, called the police, kept pushing buttons, got me to the point where, well, I guess I allowed myself drunkenly to get to the point where I start making idle threats over the phone. And uh, before we even hung up, I was in handcuffs and on my way to the county jail. Oh, boy. I ended up in uh, 18 months in prison for uh, terrorist threats over the vel telephone. Did, were you convicted? Pardon me? Were you convicted? I was convicted. So what was the sentence? 18 months in state prison. You went to prison for 18 months for drunken dialing? Drunken dialing, man. Unbelievable. Wow. It was, it was one of the, probably the worst, uh, worst 10 months in my whole life. I was locked up with a... Wow. Imagine explaining that to the other guys in prison. What are you here for? Murder. What are you here for? Rape. What are you here for? I called my girlfriend late at night and Dude. I was drunk. What a moron. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I just thought I'd share that with you. I've been a avid listener uh, since then. Uh, stick and move as much as I can. And uh, with your advice, uh, it, everything's going great, man. All right, Dave. Just hit it and quit it. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. He hits me with, uh, do you use condoms? And I'm like, of course I do. Then she says, well, I'm allergic to latex. So where do I go from there? Away. The Tom Likas Show. Oh, yeah. Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM. We're talking about drunk and dialing here. Ever done it? Call your girlfriend or your boyfriend up late at night and start telling them what you really think or start telling them what you want. Tell them what you want to do. Call people you don't remember calling. Zach on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Yo, what's up, Tom? Not much, Zach. Oh, you're going to love this one, man. All right, yeah, this is kind of like that uh, story that last guy just told you about uh, the younger guy and the uh, older mom and all that stuff. Right. I started seeing this uh, single mom about a year ago. She's 28. I'm about to turn 24. We've gone through everything, man, the drunk dialing, all that stuff. I've even, like, gone over a place drunk at night, you know, and stuff like that. And, man, <laughs> I really topped it this time. Uh, Super Bowl Sunday, uh, her roommates had a party at the house. And I got belligerent, like, really bad. And uh, I kind of had this whole jealousy thing. When I get drunk, you know, when she's hanging around with other guys and stuff like that. And instead of the drunk dialing this time, I decided to just go ahead and do it in person and just get nuts. I uh, I said a lot of things I probably shouldn't have said to her. And uh, she still hasn't called me back. <laughs> and this was on Sunday. Wow. Yeah. Uh-huh. Now, uh, why are you with a single mother again? Uh, can you tell me, please? Uh, I don't know. I guess I thought I loved her, but... Even that's probably not a good reason. Uh, no. Uh, being in love with a single mother is uh, not a good thing for you to do. Yeah. And why would you do that? Do you think you can't do anything uh, you know, on that? One thing, uh, 
one thing leads to another, you know. Oh, no, no. It, if, if you say no to it in the first place, uh, nothing leads to anything. Yeah. Yeah, well, I didn't, I didn't even know that until, because uh, she doesn't actually live with her son. And uh, I didn't even know that she had a kid until about... And uh, don't you find that to be a red flag, that... Uh... She's not part of the 90% of women who get custody of their kids. What did she do wrong to not get custody? You really have to screw up. Yeah, no, it's not really that. It's more, she just has this whole situation with the, uh, with the father. And so her mother does a lot what, of What situation does she have with the father? Uh, I don't know. All I know is that she has... What, does that, is the father abusive? Is he a drug addict? What's the deal? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think he was probably abusive. That's why she... You know, tried to get away from him. And how did the abusive father get custody of her son? Oh no, no, he doesn't have it. That's what I was saying. Her, uh, her mom has custody, and she. So doesn't this sound like a lot of baggage to you? Yeah, it really does. Oh, why are you there? I don't know, man. Maybe it's, uh, maybe it's the whole thing a habit. I guess you know, after you start doing it for a while. Yeah, you but know, why? Why would you let yourself get into that situation? Because it wasn't like that at first. You know, she didn't tell me that. That she was like that all this was there, and it kind of started... All right, so she lied to you, and then when you found out she lied, why did you tolerate that? Uh, it's not really that she lied. She just it never came up, I guess. Uh, never telling you about her life is just like lying, only uh, it's not called lying. Yeah. yeah it's called concealing, know, hiding, pretending. Yeah, a lot of that. Yeah, well, uh, you don't think those are red flags? Yeah. So why would you allow that to happen? Beats me, man. Yeah, I know. Beats me, too. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. This is Chris on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing, man? I'm okay. Good deal. Hey, I got a, I got a mind blower for you. Yeah. I was uh, I was messing around with this girl. and uh, well, Actually, I was messing around with a couple girls at the same time, but it, I'll make the story real short for you. Sitting over at her house at... Uh, one of these girls' house, and I was messing around with her, you know, uh, just playing around. We're drinking a little bit, and uh, she, you know, she had some smoke, so uh, she went ahead and she loaded me up a good bong rip. So I took a good bong rip, and I hadn't smoked weed for, you know, a good good year or so. So that got me really twisted, you know. I was, I was, I was really, I was really swerved. I'll tell you that much. Anyways, uh, I meant to go go ahead and uh, call my friend that uh, lived in the vicinity of my other girl who I was seeing at the time, uh, what I ended up doing is I ended up calling the girl who I meant to, uh, when I meant to call my friend, I ended up calling over at this other girl's house. Well, anyways, her brother answered the phone, and uh, he sounded just like my friend. So I started I started talking to him, you know, and like, like we were old pals, and he was just like, oh, yeah, you know, and I was telling him everything that I was doing with this girl. I was like, oh, man, you're not going to believe it. You know, she's, you know, she's... Uh, really hot. Yeah, she'll, she'll do anything. anything. Exactly. She'll do anything with anyone. It's great. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. And see, uh, I, I went outside to have a cigarette, you know, so I could get away from from the girl that right. was outside too. Yeah. And uh, so what happened was he he told me like, well, uh, you know, you know, this is uh, uh, the other girl who shall remain nameless. You know, this is her brother, right? And I said, oh man, I said uh, I'm getting another beep, so I hung up on him. So then I went to go. I went to go call my friend again, and you know, like I said, <laughs> I was an idiot, man. I I went to go call my friend again and uh, uh, tell him exactly what happened, you know, because that was another mind blowing story in itself. That I was talking to her brother and exposing all this information. So then I went to go call him back, call my friend back. Went and called the same number again. Told the brother more stuff. <laughs> called the brother again, and uh, he, he he. This time he put your girlfriend on the phone. Yeah, needless so to say, she could listen in on the conversation. Needless to say, right. she called me back. They had call ID. She called me over at my other at my other girlfriend's house. Oh, and you're using her phone to call too. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's it great. Didn't it didn't matter to me, and uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll just I'll just give you the summed up part of it. Anyways, I ended up banging this one chick, and this other girl at the same time. They loved it, and uh, I had to fire. I had to fire the one that uh, that uh, I was messing around with when I called. Uh, when I called the other brother. I know it's a confusing story, but anyways, uh, I'm still banging this, the one that I called and talked to her brother. Well, you know why? Because it pays to advertise. The minute you said you were banging somebody else, now your value goes up. Oh, I'm a value. It all goes to show, and I always say you should have several plates spinning, and you should be telling chicks, oh, by the way, I see other chicks. That's right. Guys are afraid to say that. 
That's so, and Don't be afraid to say that. Just do it. I, I'm not afraid to say it, and I'm not afraid to do it. Good. I I'd call up the other chick you've been bagging and tell her about your girlfriend. <laughs> That would be nice, too. I should, actually. Maybe I could get them all together and just have... Exactly. <laughs> maybe maybe you can get the brother to videotape it for you. Hey, you know what? That could be true. Now, that's a Quinella. <laughs> that would work out, man. Right. Well, hey, uh, I don't know if you still have this. I haven't heard it in a while. Can you take me out Halle Berry style? Halle Berry style. Of course I can. <laughs> Kevin on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, Kevin. How's it going? Great. Okay, here's my story. So I go out one night, meet this girl. She's friends with friends of mine. Get her phone number. Four o'clock wraps around. I decide it's time to have sex with her. Call her up. Drunk dial her. Get her over at my house. Have sex with her. Send her off on her way. Next thing you know, my life becomes hell. Girl sits outside my house for two to four hours at a time. Um, goes and finds my new girlfriends and tells them crazy stories about me, so I break up with them. Um, what else does she do? She talks to my parents every now and then. She actually... How did she get your parents' number? She, she follows me around, and she went to their house. What, she, she asked them for their phone number, and they gave it to her? No, 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 no. How did she get your parents' phone number? She didn't. She went to their house. Oh, I thought you said she calls them up. No, no, no. She went to their house. She goes she to their it. house. Not just one time, though. She does it, like, continually. And people are believing her over me at this point. It's the craziest thing ever. I she see. told all my friends and my parents that I have a drug problem so that she could be involved with my friends and my parents, which I don't. I don't even do drugs. And... Now everyone thinks I have a drug problem, and this girl is my girlfriend, and she actually cares about me. And everyone's listening to her. And I don't know. Oh, what we, to do. we should call her up right now and resolve this issue. No, no, no. Now let's call her up right now. I'll, I'll take care of her. <laughs> Absolutely not. I'm not getting any. I will. I will rectify this once and for all. <laughs> There's really no way out of it, I guarantee, Tom. If she even knows that I think about the situation, she'll start sitting outside my house again. Well, uh, then uh, I could send Dino over to the Louisville Slugger. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800. Tom. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. Why do you spend uh, your whole entire being belittling other people around you just to make yourself feel good? Because it's so entertaining, and so many millions of people like hearing me do it. Sick, sick world, man. I don't care. I'm just here to cash in on it, babe. <laughs> the Tom Likas Show. You're listening to Tom Likas on 100.7 The Buzz. For guys. The Tom Like is show at 1 800 5800 Tom. Drunken dialing. You made calls like that? You received calls like that? Nick, on the Tom Like is show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Nick. How you doing, Tom? Do you care, Nick? Of course I do. I'm doing great. Cool. Well, I got this story for you. I was just seeing this one girl, um, just off and on, you know, just for, you know, to have sex with her or just to do whatever. And um, one night, you know, I call her up, and, you know, she, she usually she just gets answers the phone, and, you know, she just loves me calling her. She loves me taking her out. She loves me doing that. And I don't even spend a dime on her. The best thing is, she pays for it. Wow. Isn't that great? Look at that. Yeah, that's great. What a and deal. Every, and every time we go and, you know, we do it on Nookie Nookie, she pays for the hotel. All right. And to top it all off, she gives me a little present, a $20 bill. Really? Really. What a deal. Yeah. yeah. Is she homely? Um, yeah, yeah, kind of. Of course she is. Hot chicks don't do that. <laughs> Probably a little junk in the trunk, that? too, right, Nikki, baby? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but... No wonder she pays. Hot chicks don't give you a $20 bill and rent the motel room. They don't. Hey, you know, she wasn't hot. She wasn't bad. She was just for the night. She was... And that's all that counts. Big tub of goo, but hey, it didn't cost you a thing, penny. The worst thing is... Is that I thought she was so good to me, 
And as soon as I talk to another girl and she knows about it, boom, she slashes my tire. Oh, boy. Well, yeah. she wanted, uh, you know, she was paying for exclusivity. I guess I guess those are all the deposits for my tires. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Unbelievable. Nick, thank you for the call. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Our comment line 24 hours a day is 310-842-9592. The Tom Likas Show.